Welcome to Lecture Online. Here's our first example of how to apply the mesh analysis method to a simple example like this. We have a simple circuit with two voltage sources, 15 volts and 10 volts, four resistors. How do we find the current and the voltages around this, this circuit? Well, the first thing we do is assign currents for each of the branches. So let's call this I1. Let's call this I2. And let's call this I3. Doesn't really matter what the order is. Good enough. Assuming that that's the direction of the current, however, looking at the voltage source going this way, this way, we may be wrong here. It could be that the current is actually flowing in the other direction through this particular branch, but it doesn't matter if we get if we took the wrong direction or chose the wrong direction, it's, we'll get a negative answer telling us that it's really in the opposite direction. The next thing we want to do is sign the mesh current. Now, it's, what's nice about this method is that there's one less mesh than there are branches, which means we'll end up with fewer equations, which makes it easier to solve. Let's call this I1, which is the mesh current for the first mesh. Let's call this I2, which is the mesh current for the second mesh. The next step is to apply the Kirchhoff voltage law to obtain equations relating the resistors to the mesh currents. Because ultimately what we want to do is find the mesh currents and from that we can find the branch currents. What we're going to do is using, uh, starting with mesh 1, we're going to sum up all the voltages around the loop and they're going to add up to zero. That's called the Kirchhoff voltage law. Starting from this corner right here, going past this voltage source, that is a plus 15 volt rise. Then we have a voltage drop across this resistor relative to the current right here. This is a minus 5 times I1. Then we come down this branch here, uh, that is a voltage drop across this resistor, minus 10 times I1. But relative to the other current, the other mesh current, you can see that the I2 current is going in this direction while I1 is going in this direction. That means there's a voltage rise relative to this current that makes this a minus I2. You say, well, wait a minute, why did you use a minus here? Well, it's because this minus times this minus makes that a plus voltage rise. Then we go across this voltage source from positive to negative, that is a minus 10 volt drop, and then we get back to the same point we started. This is our first equation that sums up all the voltages around mesh 1. Now we'll do mesh 2. We sum up all the voltages and see what we get. Starting at this point right here, going across this voltage source, that's a uh, plus 10 volts, of course it adds up to zero, a plus 10 volts. Then we have a voltage drop across this resistor, that's minus 10 times I2, but we have a voltage rise relative to current I1 in mesh 1, so minus I1. Again, this minus times this minus, make that a plus, that's a voltage rise relative to I1. Coming around the corner, now what we could do here is we could combine these two resistors or treat them separately. Since they're both in series, 6 plus 4 is 10 ohms, or you could write it out separately. So you have a voltage drop across this resistor, minus 6 times I2, and minus 4 I2, before you get back to the same point we started at, that equals 0. Anytime you have multiple resistors in series in a branch, you could simply just add them together first. Here are the two equations. They're, we're going to use those two equations to find I1 and I2, so we need to simplify them. The first equation can be written as a minus 5I1 minus 10I1, that's minus 15I1. A minus 10 times a minus I2, that's a plus I2, 10I2. And that should equal, when we bring the 15 across to the other side, it becomes a minus 15. Bring a minus 10 across, that's a plus 10. Minus 15 plus 10 is a minus 5. That's our first equation simplified. The second equation, we have a plus 10I1. Now we have a minus 10I2 and a minus 10I2, that's minus 20I2. That equals, when we bring the 10 across the other side, that is a minus 10. There's all the minuses in this equation. It may look simpler if we change all the minus signs to plus or plus to minus, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. In the end, you'll get the same result. We now have the two equations, two unknowns, to solve for the two mesh currents, and that can be done relatively easily. 
What we could do, do, what we could do here is when you notice this, there's a 15, a 10, and a 5. We could actually divide the first equation by 5. We could divide the, first, the second equation by 10. And so the two equations will look a lot simpler when you make them look like this. A minus 3i1 plus 2i2 is equal to minus 1. And here we can write that i1 minus 2i2 is equal to minus 1. So I divided the top equation by 5 and the bottom equation by 10. We could use a matrix method or we could use determinants, Kramer's rule, but it's just so much easier here simply to do it algebraically. Notice when we add the two equations together, I2 will drop out. So I'll go ahead and do that. Minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2i1. The i2's drop out equals minus 2. Divide both sides by a minus 2. i1 equals 1. That means the mesh current 1 is equal to 1 amp. Might as well put the units down. 1 amp. Let's now find mesh current 2 using this equation right here. Or actually, I'll use this equation right here. Solve this equation for i2. 2i2 is equal to minus 1, and the minus 3i1 goes to the other side. That becomes a plus 3i1, or i2 is equal to 1 half times minus 1 plus 3i1. Substituting in for i1, notice i1 is equal to 1 amp. We get i2 is equal to 1 half times minus 1 plus 3 times 1, that's 3. i2 is equal to minus 1 plus 3 is 2 times a half, which is 1 amp. And it looks like i2 is also exactly 1 amp. i1 and i2 are equal to one another. Well, from this, we should be able to determine all the branch currents. Notice that the branch i1 has the same current as the mesh i1. So I1 equals the mesh I1, which is equal to 1 amp. I2 is also equal to I2, the mesh I2, which is also equal to 1 amp. So both the branches I1 and I2, the branch current I1 and I2 are equal to 1 amp. What about I3? I3 is equal to, well, there's different ways of approaching that. Notice that it, I3 is in the same direction as I1 and in the opposite direction as I2. So it should be I1 minus I2. So mesh current I1 minus mesh current I2. That means it's 1 amp minus 1 amp, which is equal to 0. Branch current 3 is actually equal to 0. Another way to look at that is we can look at this branch point right here and use the Kirchhoff current law. All the currents entering the branch, which is I1, equals all the currents leaving the branch, which is I2 plus I3. Solving this for I3, we can say that I3 is equal to I1 minus I2, bringing I2 to the other side, and I3 is equal to I1 being 1 amp minus I2 being 1 amp is equal to 0 amps. Again, that shows that I3 is 0. The way the current then runs, uh, through the circuit, we have 1 amp coming this way, 1 amp, let's see here, uh, 1 amp coming this way, 1 amp coming this way, so the current is just going around the circuit like this, and no current is flowing through the middle circuit. Wow, the middle branch, I should say the middle branch, not the middle circuit. And that's really uh, remarkable that that's the case. Hmm, let's see here. If this is a 15 volt source, and this is a 5 ohm resistor, then if this is 0 volts, then this is 15 volts. We drop 5 volts here, that would be equal to 10 volts there. That would be equal to 0 volts here. Then coming around, that would be 0 volts. So current is simply flowing around here, and no current is flowing through this resistor. Interesting. All right, but that's the way it looks on this particular circuit.